Yuji will surpass Gojo and Sakuna and play the most important role in the final arc of the story. I truly do believe that he's going to be the one to take care of business in this final arc and he's going to have an honored one awakening. So strap in because today we're going to be talking about Yuji's origins such as is he a reincarnation or incarnation? Maybe he's actually a clone of Sakuna or perhaps a reincarnation of his twin and also the power-ups that Yuji's going to get and how powerful he's going to be. Such as the power from the death paintings, his potential domain expansion, his soul swapping heavenly restriction or his body swapping curse technique and of course his honored one awakening which I do think think is coming for the main character of Jujutsu Kaisen. And hey, be sure to leave a like to help your boy out. Thank you very much. And if you haven't already, be sure to subscribe for a ton of JJK content. I make a ton of JJK videos, what ifs, theories, power scaling, versus battles, live streams, and spoiler videos and streams too. So if you love JJK, you're going to love this channel. And of course, thank you to the honored one member of the channel, Isa Kaisen. Thank you. All right, now the first thing that I'm going to break into is the origins of Yuji Tadori. And there's a lot of things that it could be, and I've made a lot of videos on this. Okay, so the first thing is, is Yuji an incarnation or reincarnation? Now, the reason why reincarnation would be fitting is because the whole theme theme of Buddhism is really big in Jujutsu Kaisen. It's probably one of the biggest themes in JJK. And we actually learn from the Time Plasma organization during the Hidden Inventory that Tengen was actually the one who was responsible for spreading Buddhism throughout Japan during the Nara and Heian period, which potentially means it's even 200 years before the Heian period. And of course in Buddhism, one of the biggest themes is reincarnation. And we've yet to see anyone actually truly reincarnate. All we've seen are actually incarnations, which is a very different thing. And the reason why the reincarnation fits is because Yuji is someone who has no memories of his past life or whatever it may be, which is a pretty big part of reincarnation, though there are some cases where you do retain those memories, but most of the time you don't. Whereas all the culling game players and even Sukuna are incarnations. It's not a rebirth of a new soul, it's actually just the same soul, and because of this you keep all the memories and everything you had in your previous life. But for this reason it would make sense why Sukuna recognizes Yuji as someone from that time, implying he's from the Hain era. I just want to quickly clarify as well, there is a mistranslation with the viz where Sukuna and Urume actually say Yuji looks like a statue from the Heidima period, if I pronounced it right. No, that's actually not true, it's just a mistranslation. Translation. They aren't actually referring to that. Okay, but what is Yuji a reincarnation of? Well, he's probably a reincarnation of maybe Sukuna's twin. Now, we know that Gege said in an interview that Sukuna had no children and he also didn't have a wife. However, it says nothing about parents, since he obviously had parents, and siblings. And of course, this is a big deal for Yom and Sukuna because the whole gist of Sukuna in real life is the fact that he is a conjoined twin, where Sukuna in real life, it's actually a real case, he has two heads in one body, a conjoined twin. Which it does make sense because when you look at Sukuna's face, the side where the conjoined twin should be is kind of murky, where it looks really weird. And I don't even know if we can actually chalk that up to him being an ascended human who evolved past humanity and is now a mixture of a human and a curse where he's neither but at the same time both, kind of like a new species. Because we saw Tengen didn't have any weird birthmarks. Now Tengen did look very alien, but no, the rest of his face very least did look normal. Well, as normal as they can look, right? But I do think that birthmark, whatever that mark is on his face, actually just something that he probably had even when he was a human, before he ascended and he was just a regular guy. Probably from his conjoined twin. Now this would be really interesting because Sukuna and Yuji are polar opposites by the way. They are just true opposites, narratively in every way possible and also morally. Where even their philosophies clash so badly that Sukuna just despises Yuji. A lot of people question why Sukuna hates Yuji so much. I mean he hates him more than any other character in the series. He gives him no respect and it's because of Yuji's philosophy to save the weak, to protect the weak, and to be a cog where it goes literally against everything Sukuna stands for. So it would be a nice little parallel there. And maybe Kenjaku played a role into this, however he did this we don't actually know. I mean Tengen did spread around Buddhism and Kenjaku was friends of Tengen way back when. Well they did have a falling out at some point but maybe Kenjaku was experimenting on making a reincarnation specifically maybe with Sukuna's twin or it could even just be a random guy from the Heian period that he's done this for. And it would explain why Yuji doesn't have his memories or it could always be the case where he's an incarnation but he just didn't keep his memories but there's no point of that but it's always possible. And there's always the other theory where the entire Yuji family bloodline is from a clone of Sukuna. So of course we saw Tengen was actually making experiments and actually made an entire clone of Sukuna potentially is what it is, but very likely that's what it is. That Shinbutsu mummy that he had. So if Tengen was experimenting with making Sukuna clones, that's probably how he actually even learned how to send himself. Well, then Kenjaku is probably experimenting with it as well, and maybe at some point he actually did make a clone of Sukuna, not a biological offspring, since we know Sukuna himself had never had children. That's very important. But of course, this offspring may have had children, so that may explain why Yuji's father and grandfather look remarkably exactly like Ryo and Sukuna from the Heian period. It's nothing to do with him being a vessel. It actually, just looks so much like. Sukuna. They have the same hair and even their faces look the same, <laughs> barring that inhuman face that he has, the four eyes and scars. But it is pretty similar. So yeah, maybe he's an offspring of a Sukuna clone that just passed on children. Or hey, maybe he's that and he's also a reincarnation. I don't know. He's the main character. He can be a mix of a lot of things. Have you seen Bleach? Well, I have. So maybe he's 
like that. It's main character syndrome. But maybe not, Gege really doesn't matter. Tree's main characters like main characters, which can be cool too. All right, now for the juicy parts, the power up. Now, of course, we saw Yuji actually ate the death painting wounds, and this is going to give him a big power up because we don't actually know how strong these death paintings are. As far as I know, the only thing that we know for certain is that death paintings 1 through 3 are special grade, which is Eso, Ketsu, and Choso. Now, it was never said that the other death painting wounds, what grade they are. Maybe it has, and maybe I've just missed it. I was looking it up. But they are considered special grade objects, and potentially they could actually be special grade level curses. Maybe stronger than Choso, or maybe even weaker than him. Or maybe even just grade 1 curses. But regardless, even if they're just grade 1 curses, that's still a lot of cursed energy from all of them, because there's six of them. And that is a lot of cursed energy Yuji's gonna get. And it's possible that he might actually get their curse techniques. Because remember, they all have blood related curse techniques from the famous Carmel clan. So are we gonna see Yuji pull out some blood manipulation? That would be really cool. What's also possible is that it actually awakened the innate technique that Yuji had that he got from Kenjaku, the body swapping curse technique. And maybe Yuji has a variation where it's evolved and it's something completely new, where he doesn't even need to hop his brain out to switch with people. Maybe he could just share some blood. So if they drink his blood, maybe he could swap with them. Again, like an extension technique. That would be really cool and it'd really parallel well with Kenjaku, who again is his mother. And it would make a lot of sense how he got this technique because it's something he's born with. Or it could also be a soul swapping curse technique or potentially even a soul swapping heavenly restriction as that's also a big theory going around and Yuji does have a very interesting connection to the souls as we've seen throughout the series as he is someone who is able to just randomly suppress Sukuna. And I mean again this guy isn't even a sorcerer he is actually just a human before he's got cursed energy he just suppresses Sukuna which is pretty raw I can't lie. So it's possible that he's just been gifted a very special ability related to the souls and that's how he's able to do that and that's actually how he's able to body swap and it's something he mastered when he read Yuki's book and got more information on it. But regardless of whatever it is I do think he's going to put it to good use and I think he's going to be doing that with his potential domain expansion. Now he has been training with Kusakabe as we saw and we saw Higuruma is still around. My goat, my guy, the best one out there, Higuruma. And interestingly enough we actually see Higuruma instantly grasp the concept of a domain amplification like that. The first time he heard it he instantly knew what it was, understood how it worked and probably might even be able to do it himself and I know that is a crazy thing to say but keep in mind this guy has one of the highest potentials we've seen in the entire series. He started off with a domain expansion from the get-go and he had completely mastered his domain expansion and his curse techniques and everything that came with it and even a shikigami all within the span of less than two weeks. I think it was like 10 or 11 days and he instantly ascended to a grade one level sorcerer and not a normal grade one, a high tier grade one at that. And let's be honest, he can kill any of the grade ones in the series because of his domain expansion. It's that powerful. Where even if you commit a very, very petty crime such as littering, he could probably get you on sentence, take away your curse technique and you are finished because you can't even control your curse energy properly and you don't have your main arsenal of your curse technique. Okay, but regardless, not to get too much into Higuruma. The point is Higuruma is someone who knows domains very, very well. And we saw at least he was around at the end, so maybe they got him in during halfway through the training, and maybe he's been training Yuji in the terms of domains and all that stuff and teaching him about that. And we know Yuji is actually training with Kusakabe, and Kusakabe is someone who's master at domains. Even Kenjaku praises him as being someone who knows how to use the new shadow really, really well. And perhaps from learning all this, Yuji might actually learn not just the basics of a domain, but also potentially how to even make a domain himself, which would be madness. Imagine he uses his potential blood manipulation curse technique that he got or his soul swapping ability and he applies that to the sure hit, that would be really crazy. Where a sure hit allows him to damage the body directly or even to steal the soul of someone, swap souls of people, that would be really cool. And it does go into the theory that Yuji's gonna put his soul into Megami's body and with Megami together they're gonna fight Sukuna inside the innate domain while the actual battle of Sukuna goes down in the real world. Kind of like the ending of Fairy Tale or Seven Daily Sins or even Naruto with Obito at that time. Which is very cheesy, I know, it's very standard shonen, but hey, with the exclusion of a few plot twists, Gege has been pretty straightforward, I really can't lie. With unsealing Gojo, training, getting into the final arc, so maybe he'd just go that way. And this domain Shohei would be a guaranteed way where he'd be able to get into Sukuna's body. Or maybe he'd put 20 fingers Sukuna into him, or maybe he'd actually switch Megumi out and put himself in there. Who knows what would happen? It'd be very interesting and there's a whole list of possibilities. But I also do think that there's a high potential that Yuji's going to get a honored one power up, and it's just going to be absolutely mental. I mean, we already saw he's got one power up, and he's got another off-screen power up, and he's been training for a month off-screen, so he's already really strong. At least right now, he's not on the level of Gojo and Sukuna, which is isn't surprising it's Gojo and Sukuna, right? If he was, he would have joined in on the battle. But he's still gone far stronger than we even saw him when he fought a very, very nerf 50 finger Sukuna with Mahik, mind you. But I do think as the MC, he really just might get that love at the end and get that big power up. And you know, if you're someone who's been watching this channel, you know I like to call him Fraud G Itadori, you know, Plot G, the guy who takes a lot of L's. And of course, all jokes as well. Though there is a bit of truth to it, you know, it's nothing that serious, though I know people get very upset by it. But yeah, maybe he's actually gonna beat the fraud allegations and actually be treated, finally, like an MC. Though it's been refreshing to see an MC who's not just godlike and overpowered in every way and gets these insane power-ups, even though Yuji does have a lot of help from the plot. But it doesn't matter, you know, maybe we'd actually get to see him shine and finally get a 
very clean W, which has been a long time coming, especially for such a great character such as Yuji Sadori. But do you think Yuji's gonna get an Honored One power? Maybe a Soul Swapping Heavenly Instruction, Body Swapping Curse Technique, a Domain Expansion, a Reincarnation of Sukuna's Twin or a Clone or whatever it is? Let me know in the comments because we're probably gonna find out soon so you can put your theories down below and if they end up being right, you can actually say, hey look, I said this before and I actually called it, so you know, get those bragging rights. And if you did enjoy the video, be sure to leave a like, it's much appreciated, it really helps out, so thank you very much if you do. Of course, if you haven't already subscribed for a ton of Judicate content, I got what ifs versus battles, theories, power scaling, analysis, spoiler videos and streams, and just a whole bunch of stuff. So if you love JJK, you're gonna love this channel. And of course, thank you to all the members of the channel. If you see anyone on screen, you're an absolute legend. Thank you. And if you're someone who watched this far, you remember the Higuruma fan club. But that's all. Thank you very much for watching and have a nice day. Take care.